Hello and welcome to episode two of Zombie Bite. Zombie Bite. Um, so uh, no one's really going to survive the zombie apocalypse, but a few people are going to make it just a little bit longer, and I have a list of the names of the very first uh, uh, group of survivors that uh, are going to set up a defense, organize a uh, um, well, an infrastructure, essentially, for survival, uh, based... Uh, on uh, the remains of the past, and uh, yeah, they're probably they're not. I mean, they're not going to survive, but they'll survive a little longer. And uh, let's read their names, shall we? Oh, and I might I might also mention that one name on the list more important than all the others. It's not my name either. Hold on a second. All right, that's for you, Warbles. Um. All right. Well, the first name on the list is Batfly. Uh, Batfly's weapon of choice is the, uh, the slingshot and the 450 Marlin. Um, I like the slingshot. Uh, the 450 Marlin, uh, we need to talk about sound. Zombies have uh, an unusual affinity for sound, and what's unusual about it is some react more than others. And I think that's worth uh, figuring out why that is. Um, another thing about uh, the way that some are attracted more than others is uh, when zombies, you know, say a. Uh, a, a bomb goes off. Uh, zombies get attracted to it. Some drift away. Some never drift away. So a place where there was a loud sound, um, a concentration is going to be uh, uh, a little higher right there. So uh, the use of uh, loud noises needs to be discussed as a group. Um, supplies. Uh, the Echo Blue Atmosphere Water Generator. Atmospheric. Whoa, dude, that's cool. You're a welcome member. Um, a little Johnny Walker uh, Black Label Scotch. Nice. Uh, vehicle Toyota FJ Cruiser. Um, which I think is an excellent thing to have handy for uh, escapes. I think, right, I think there should be zip lines that go to cruisers. Um, I don't think that using a cruiser to move around just to grab, grab supplies is necessarily a very good idea. I need to be a little bit more quiet about that. Uh, all right, so uh, so welcome, Batfly. You're gonna survive a little bit longer. You're not gonna make it, but you're gonna get you're gonna get some extra time. So that'll be nice. Um, Pax, the next survivor, well, survived the the, the moment. Um, dog collar zapper, and that might be that might be good to keep yourself from screaming, like when zombies come up and start. You know, doing this on the window or whatnot, you put the dog collar zapper on your guy. <coughs> That's the sound of a, a stifled electronic scream. But uh, here's the thing about uh, zombies: like, they, obviously, their circulatory system is shut down, um, though uh, they still they're they're moving, uh, you know, via the power of their musculature. So um, zombies can be incapacitated uh, by electricity, and I, I experimented with that. Um, a while back, I was trying to get into a, uh, a garage um, to pull out supplies, and uh, there were power lines down, uh, a water tank had burst, and uh, right in front of the garage that I needed to get access to was one of those those big zombies. They appeared to be like like mutated. Um, so I was like contemplating it, like wondering like how I'm going to get that guy to move. Um, when he lurched forward, and I, I slammed on the gas and started to like swing to the left, and he ran in front, uh, thinking I he was going to stop the vehicle. He looked big enough, uh, and I was able to slide him into that pool of water where the power lines were down, um, and then I immediately backed out because I didn't want to get fried myself. Um, he was unable to move, um, and I could tell that it was hurting him, um, but it didn't look like it was hurting him much. Um, but he stayed, he stayed stuck to, in that position. I was able to get out and get what I needed, and I drove off, and he was still standing there. Um, so there's an interesting thing about electricity and uh, its use of, as defense and attack against uh, zombies. Uh, we need to exp experiment with that as well. It seemed unusual. I mean, like, if you and I stepped into an uh, electrically charged pool of water, um, all sorts of terrible things would happen, but this... This guy appeared to be uh, relatively okay. 
All right, another person who's going to make it just a little bit longer in the zombie apocalypse uh, is uh, Bark Lord. Welcome, Bark Lord. Uh, Bark Lord's weapon of choice, the claw hammer. And uh, I have an excellent claw hammer for you. Uh, um, I'll show it to you in a moment. But uh, it's made by cold steel. You'll love it. Uh, and a gallon of malt liquor. Stand calm. I'm depressing the nervous system in a zombie apocalypse. It's important. That's why they served out alcohol on a daily basis uh, on ships of war, because uh, um, it's a little hairy out there, and fellows need to stay even keel. <laughs> but welcome, Bark Lord. Uh, we, I look forward to your expertise in other areas as well. Um, I was also thinking that it's very important to have uh, morale boosted, so uh, that would, might, you might be interested in uh, uh, morale boosting. Um, oh... Uh, Goji Goiver, Goji Goiver 3, uh, the chainsaw, and that's an excellent uh, idea, and so I have, I have some chainsaws available for you, I'll show them to you in a moment. Um, but the other thing too is sound, and so I wonder if they have electric chainsaws uh, that don't need uh, the cable. So we should probably work it, look into that, because um, I think an actual chainsaw will create a larger problem than it solves. Um, you know, it might be good for like a short-term thing when you get into that uh, land cruiser. Um, but uh, overall, I think that I think it might uh, it just might attract more than uh, more than anything else. Um, all right, so that's uh, that's our people. Um, except I mentioned the most important person that we're going to have is uh, uh, welcome to. Uh, a but not antisocial. Now, a but not antisocial just had this to say, and uh, I'm going to play a little something for you too, but um, in a moment, because um, I appreciate your spirit. Uh, he says, "A real man faces zombies," and uh, you know this is for everybody, especially if you're setting up uh, your own zombie survival area. Uh, you're going to need someone like a but not antisocial, uh, and an excellent way to uh, to get the most, and also. Uh, but um, you are uh, highly valuable, and we will all show our appreciation. Um, but none of us expect you to last a week. That's cool. I mean, a light that burns twice as bright burns half as long, right? Um, uh, to, so for those of you setting up your own enclaves uh, and survival areas, um, uh, someone like a butt is probably gonna. He's gonna want to use the chainsaw. He's gonna want to use the car and stuff like that. So you're gonna want to try to, um, at first, uh, send him to distant areas to to gather supplies. You don't want him in your area uh, doing his work because he's gonna be loud. Stuff's gonna be blowing up. Um, he's gonna be rampaging uh, through uh, wide open soccer fields uh, when he could just go around. He's gonna go right through. Probably he's gonna mess up your Land Cruiser, uh, Bad Fly. Uh, it's going to come back all messed up. Um, but we're going to want to support this guy, because uh, if he could continue to go out and come back from these long-distance journeys, and uh, if there's any kind of problem areas, like you know places where looters hold up or something like that, try to send someone like a butt, uh, not antisocial, around their area. So not only we remove um, supplies from these uh, these people that might have got a little crazy, they're, they're, they're hold up shooting, uh, loot and just, you know, law of the jungle. Um, he could go in there, pull stuff out of their area. Also, he's going to make a ruckus, like I mentioned. That's going to draw more zombies to that area. And uh, if a gang of looters wants to jump uh, a butt, not antisocial, um, they're going to have to deal with somebody that's already thoroughly practiced in calming people down. Just calm down, a butt, not antisocial, we'll say, uh, probably with a rocket launcher. Oh, okay, but eventually, he, uh, if he survives, if you make it longer than five days, but I don't think you're going to do it. If you make it to day seven, and uh, people out there, if your particular a but not antisocial makes it to day seven, then he's key. Continue to give him anything he wants. Uh, and that's when you start setting up uh, protective areas, like you got to get, like, you know, Bark Lord over to... Uh, um, like the bakery warehouse, uh, so like you get him there safely. Uh, Barkler could uh, and uh, a butt could seal that baby up. No ground floor entrances. Um, 
And then we can see about getting that place set up for a safe house, food production, uh, does it have water storage, um, you know, what, what are the values in this warehouse, how could they be protected, how could they be utilized. Uh, and then a butt leaves, leaves Bark Lord there, he comes back to us, uh, and then uh, takes uh, packs to uh, um, the water pump station. Um, make sure that water is uh, not contaminated, uh, get it flowing, uh, and also, once again, make sure it's protected. So Butt starts moving people to where they could set up safe houses so all your eggs aren't in one basket. Um, he makes sure he takes care of all the bashing, and then uh, people like uh, Bark Lord and Pax uh, take care of uh, business. Um, and then what you also need is, uh, and th this is where I think Batfly, you might come in handy um, with your high-powered rifles. You need an overwatch. You need a listening post. Um, while you have uh, one person uh, doing one-on-one, -on -one, getting, say, Bark Lord to uh, the, the warehouse, um, you have an overview of uh, that with your rifle. Um, I'm not concerned as much with zombies, I'm concerned with other looters, um, but in a, a zombie situation, um, you, might have to, you might have to kick down some fire. I mean, it's way more important to get those two people into the warehouse. We'd worry about the, the higher concentration of zombies after that. So, all right, so that's, that's my, initial, um, uh, my initial team. Uh, I, hope that, uh, I hope we all function well together. Uh, and I do think that uh, uh, the electrical effect on a zombie um, needs to be explained uh, and explored. And uh, the different types of zombies and how they re react to sound. Maybe they can be controlled by sound. Maybe um, since they have different levels of response, um, we should probably figure out why they respond that way. And then perhaps they could be manipulated with sound. We won't have to shoot them with high-powered rifles. Because it also occurs to me that uh, there, uh, th that the zombie apocalypse might end not because uh, uh, we all get bitten or uh, every last zombie is shot or, or whatnot, but uh, what if it's not a fatal thing? What if you could recover from it? Uh, which is why I'm masking up at the moment. Because uh, you know, if we if we go on uh, like a butt, uh, you might end up uh, afterwards uh, in victory uh, going to jail. <laughs> But don't worry about it. About you're most likely going to get bit, so uh, I, w I wouldn't be concerned. But the rest of us, you should probably be masking up, uh, making sure that your identity isn't known. Because you know what happens during the zombie apocalypse stays in the zombie apocalypse. That's going to be catchphrase number two. So I got a couple clips for you to show you what I've got for you to work with. And remember, catchphrase number one: for every two zombies in front of you, there's one behind you. I know you got him picked, but the man's in trouble. I'm going to show you how great I am. But somewhere along the line, you changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame. Like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Because if you're willing to go through all the battling you got to go through to get to where you want to get, who's got the right to stop you? I mean, maybe some of you guys got something you never finished, something you really want to do, something you never said to someone, something. And you're told no, even after you pay your dues, who's got the right to tell you that? Who? Nobody. It's your right to listen to your gut, and ain't nobody's right to say no. After you earn your right to be where you want to be and do what you want to do. I decided I'd revive the art in 52, so I started making them and demonstrating and showing people what they'd do. And what Rufus can do with a slingshot is astounding. He often cuts weeds from his cornfield. 
So you want to go to the right? Yeah, fall to the right. <laughs> okay. It did. That's with the hammer side of a war hammer. Look at that. Would you want to be wearing that? Look at the... I don't know if the camera can see in there. There's like seven or eight cardboard boxes backing this thing up. And I crushed probably four or five of them into nothingness and ripped that giant hole through that mail. That's with the hammer. But you never want me to do this.